Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm sharing with you my simple approach to painting reflections in watercolor. So if you're curious about the materials and the colors of paints that I'm using in this video, I'm actually going to link them all below in the description box so you don't have to worry about taking notes while I'm painting or anything like that. So you can find everything below along with direct links to the products if that makes it easier for you to take a look at what it is if you're curious about my supplies. So let's get into it. So like I said, this is a demonstration of how I like to paint watercolor reflections in the most simplest form. And this is a demonstration where I just kind of made up the painting. I'm not using a reference photo so that I can concentrate and focus only on practicing the technique of reflecting these trees into water. So the first thing that you'll want to do if you're following along is paint a row of trees. You can paint them similar to mine or you can paint them however you want to paint them. But for me, the easiest way to approach this was to paint just a line of trees and I just imagine they're uh, lined up along a shoreline and the shoreline sort of tapers into the water and so that's what I'm painting here so first I painted like I said a line of trees and I varied the colors a little bit because I think it makes the painting more interesting and if we're painting anyways why don't we make our painting as interesting as possible and one way to do that is just to simply vary the colors of your trees if you're painting them in a line and then the next thing I did after painting the line of trees is to add the shoreline. And the shoreline, like I said, it just tapers off into the water. So you can simply just use a rough sort of stroke and, and really let the paint dance on the paper. And like you can see, my stroke for this shoreline is very imperfect and I purposely wanted it to look that way. So you might wanna do the same or you might not, but I just wanted to offer that suggestion because it really just brings a level of liveliness to the painting that I think otherwise, um, if you're too constricted or strict with it, then um, you know might take some of the life out of it. So just a little bit of a suggestion from me to you. So after you paint the shoreline, then you would come back in and you're going to do the water. And the water is the part that is the most interesting part here because this is the point of this practice session is to paint reflections using watercolors. And so this part is of course the trickiest because we're working wet on wet. And working wet on wet has a lot to do with timing and um, an understanding when you should come in and put in your other paint colors. So when you should drop in your wet paint onto the wet paper. And this is going to change based on the type of paper you're using and the climate you're in, whether or not it's drier or more humid. Um, this is something that you personally will just gain more and more experience with the more that you paint with your supplies in your current environment and so it really is just practice and so the best way to learn is to give it a try and so exercises like this I think are really helpful so all I'm doing here is I'm coming in and I'm doing a pale wash of blue uh, as my wet layer and then I'm coming in with darker uh, darker layers to show sort of the water and I think it's just interesting to put the more of the darker layer sort of in the foreground and then fade up. Um, that's just a choice I made. You obviously don't have to do it that way, but if you're following along, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just sort of adding a little variation and then I'm going in and I'm going to add the reflection of the trees. And this is where you'll be able to tell if you start to drop in your color too early, meaning your paper is very wet because if it's very wet, then your paint will bloom and bleed out very very quickly and widespread and you'll lose sort of the structure of the stroke so you'll put down a stroke and then it'll become this big blob and then you'll know that you put in your paint a little bit too soon and it might have been good to wait a little bit longer in fact this is a good demonstration of that happening if you look at the far right tree in this example I I, I'm going back and fixing it right now, but 
the tree or the tree's reflection just bloomed way too much. So I think, you know, self critiquing right now is this I went into this too early and I could have waited longer for the paper to get a little bit more dry, but you don't want the paper completely dry because then you lose the ability to get those soft edges. So that's why this wet on wet technique is, is tricky. It's a, it's a timing thing and it just takes experience. So I think though, painting like this, painting reflections like this, where you're leaving them abstract and you're really allowing the characteristics of watercolors to just be the way that they are, meaning it's really only watercolors that can do this blooming effect and using this wet on wet technique. So really allowing those to shine through and to use them to their strengths for something like reflections, to me, it just really is such a beautiful way to use the medium. And so I tend to like to leave them very abstract like this. So fuzzy and just like hints of, of the trees sort of in the water rather than making the reflections mirror like and too realistic. So hopefully that makes sense. And I wanted to share also that this demonstration is actually a real-time lesson that I filmed for the members of my Paint With Me community. So inside of my community, there's a full-length version of this video with step-by-step -step instructions with exactly sort of the movement of my brush strokes and how I really approached it. Uh, so it's a lot more detailed, but I thought that sharing this as a time-lapse along with some tips and tricks would still be really helpful for everybody else. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you are at all interested in what this community is all about, it's called Paint With Me and I will leave a link in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I'll see you in the next video.